Hello, everybody, and welcome to the third ending podcast. I'm your host, Izzy Rain, and today we have a wide variety of topics we're going to be talking about. But first, I want to start with the spring training scores from this weekend. So if you aren't really familiar with baseball, spring training scores don't really matter. This is this practice getting ready for the season. That takes place in Florida and Arizona, and you can have teams from different leagues playing each other, a lot of interleague play, so our first one is one, in fact. So we're starting with yesterday, Saturday's game. So we had the Phillies playing the Rays. The Phillies won 11-3. Then we had the Orioles, oh my gosh, I'm shocked by this. We had the Orioles beating the Red Sox 9-1. Then we had down in Jupiter, the Marlins playing the Cardinals with the Cardinals winning 4-3. to And then we had the Twins playing the Nationals with the Nationals winning 10-6. to We had the Braves playing the Tigers with the Tigers winning 7-4. to And then the Yankees played the Pirates with the Pirates winning 8-7. to I actually saw those two teams play each other. So the Rays must have had a split schedule or a sp- I don't know what a split squad. I, I'm not really sure what that's called, but they basically divide the team in half so and play two games in one day. So we had the Rays played the Blue Jays and the Rays won six to five. Then we had the Astros play in the Mets, the Astros winning eight to seven and the Rangers Giants 0-0 and games in spring training can tie because as I said, these games don't really matter and the longer enough things so or maybe i don't know if that game got canceled or something it's this year of zero we had the angels play in the red with the angels winning 11 to 2 i saw some videos of that game uh then we have the mariners and royals the mariners getting killed by the royals winning 8 to 0. we had the indians and athletics with the athletics winning by one is one to zero then the Brewers and the Cubs, a rivalry, and the Brewers won 7-4, so I'm sure Milwaukee was very happy about that. And the Rockies played the White Sox, but the Rockies sadly got defeated with the White Sox winning 10-6. to Then my personal favorite team, the Dodgers, we lost yesterday to the Diamondbacks 6-5. to And the Giants had another game, or they had a split schedule or a split squad, with the Padres winning 7-6. to six. Now, moving on to today, in the West, in the Cactus League, we still have some games going on because it's 6 o'clock Eastern time when I'm filming this, so we still have some going on. But the Yankees won against the Tigers today, 7-1. to one. The Braves beat the Marlins, 6-5. to five. The Red Sox beat the Twins, 9-7. to seven. And I did not know the Twins were in Florida. I didn't know about that. That's, um, I may talk about that later on the podcast, or I may save it for next week, but we'll get into that at one point. So the Nationals beat the Astros 4-2. to two. The Mets beat the Cardinals 10-8. to eight. The Rays beat the Pirates 10-4. to four. And the Phillies tied with the Twins 3-3. Three to three. The Yankees lost to the Blue Jays 5-2. to two. The Reds beat the Brewers 11-5. to five. The Dodgers beat the Rangers 6-3. to three. The Royals beat the Indians 13-7. to seven. The Cubs beat the White Sox 13-4. to four. So I'm sorry to White Sox fans about that. Then the Orioles beat the Tigers 7-5. to five. I'm shocked by these Orioles scores. Then the Rangers beat the Padres 11-3. The Angels beat the Athletics 4-1. And the Rockies beat the Giants 9-3. And lastly, the Mariners beat the Diamondbacks 6-3. So those are our scores from this weekend. If you went to any of the games, tell me in the comments. I do know um, who I'm seeing at spring training, what teams. So I'm very excited. I'm not going to say on the podcast yet because I don't want to jinx anything. So knock on wood over here, even though I didn't say But I am very excited for spring training for some warm weather because it's supposed to get cold here this weekend in Florida. It's like in the 80s. So I am pumped for that. So moving in, we are moving into our actual topics because we're going to talk about the scores every week. But we are going to talk about Clayton Kershaw first. Um, I don't really know a lot about this. 
Uh, but Kershaw has had um, back injuries in the past and whatnot. So pitchers, they get injured a lot. And he is older. Um, he's been in the game a while. I don't know exactly for how many years. And he's obviously, I, I would say he's the best pitcher of this generation. If you don't agree, I'm sorry. But that's just my opinion. And I think a lot of people can agree with that. If you go to a Dodger game, there are tons of Kershaw jerseys. Because Kershaw's just a cool dude. He's a really nice guy and all that. So he does a lot of good. He um, has a charity and everything. But a lot of players are charities. But still, so he has at spring training. a lot, And again, at spring training, a lot of times they don't. Oh, the aces don't really pitch. I because they don't. I guess they don't want to risk getting injuries and all that. Even though other players can get injured. Last year, Justin Turner, I think he got hit in the hand by an A's pitcher, and he was out for a lot at the start of the season. It was very sad because obviously Justin Turner, another fan favorite, and he is a great baseball player. So it was sad to see him not be at the start of the season. But we did get him back later in the season. So that's really good. But um, so Kershaw just, I've been seeing just a lot of stuff. Mainly on Dodger things, not on MLB. But um, Dave Roberts, the coach, just has been saying that Kershaw, um, he is doing better. I, I have seen him more this week. But I don't know if it's something mentally or physically. So I... I don't know what's going to win with Kershaw, so if anybody knows, let me know, because I'm concerned. I love Kershaw, like, I don't know what's happening with him, but I've been seeing, I get notifications all the time about Kershaw, it's like, Kershaw is doing better and all that, and I'm like, what happened? But okay, so moving on to more of a rant is, if you're not familiar, during the playoffs of last year, I don't know if it was the playoffs or the World Series, but I'm going to say it was in both. The I think it's Migos who does this song. It's Is You Ready. I hate um, when songs don't have proper grammar, which a lot of songs don't have proper grammar, but especially when it's like is instead of are. It drives me crazy, and I that song is just so stupid and uh, like it's not that I don't like rap music because I do like a lot of it and it's just that one song like why does MLB have to use it all the time so I was like we're done with the um postseason we can go into a new season and hopefully that song's not around but I saw Padre sweatshirts that said is you ready and I'm like why so I don't know if it's only the Padres that have those sweatshirts we know how I feel about the Padres I just hate that song with a passion. So now we're moving into rumor central. No, um, I don't know if this is just a rumor or if it's actually in the works, but there were some articles that came out earlier this week that talked about the Angels potentially moving to Los Angeles County. If you're not familiar, they are the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Anaheim is in Orange County, which is south of Los Angeles County. It's literally probably a two-hour drive to Dodger Stadium, which is in Los Angeles. You can see downtown LA from Dodger Stadium. Um, I'm going to say it's like a two-hour drive. I've done the drive, so I don't know. For uh, So it was like a two-hour drive. So I don't know with traffic and all that, how much it varies. So it's always been a thing like, why do the Angels have to have Los Angeles in the name? Obviously, it's for marketing reasons for people to buy stuff because it has LA on it rather than Anaheim. Because I don't know if a lot of people know about Anaheim. I've been to Anaheim personally. I've been to Angels Stadium. I've been to Disney and all that. So I don't know if that's like why i don't know i forgot what i said basically but the angels are potentially moving to long beach to have a waterfront stadium i don't want the angels going into la county because i like having the dodgers as the only la team but i understand if they do and i'm sure their stadium will be nice i really like angel stadium in anaheim it's one of my favorites that i've it, it, it is my favorite that i've been to and I highly recommend going before they move if they are going to move. But I don't know if they actually do plan on moving or if this is, is rumors. Um, but I do think the Angels will probably move to L.A. County at one point if they don't move to like another city or something. Um, so I don't know. Would you guys want the Angels to move to L.A. County or do you think they're fine 
staying in Anaheim. I personally want them to stay in Anaheim, but maybe just take off the Los Angeles Angel, the Los Angeles part of the name. Because again, you're like two hours away from LA. I get you're in Southern California, but I mean, you could be the San Diego Angels, really, if you want to stick with San Diego's about the same distance. So I don't really like how they have LA in their name when they're in Anaheim. I just think they should be the uh, they could go back to the California Angels. I think that would be fine. But who knows what the Angels plan on doing. Um, so we're going to talk about Arenado now. He is one of my favorite players. I think he is just a very entertaining player to watch. But he signed back with the Rockies. I don't remember for how many years. But it was a pretty big deal that he got a lot of money. Because it, it went into actually... The, the word that starts with an A that I don't know how to pronounce. But um, he did finally signed back with the Rockies and I am glad that he is staying with the Rockies even though the, it is another team in the NL West but I do like the Rockies. I feel like the Rockies and the Dodgers do have a pretty good relationship. The players do. I don't know why but um, I do like Arenado being on the Rockies. I know there are talks of him going to the Yankees and I'm glad he didn't because I, I don't want him on the Yankees. Um, I know people talk about the Yankees being stacked all the time. I personally don't really think that they are because if we just look at how they, uh, like, just how they've played against <laughs> the Red Sox um, in the postseason, I, I mean, I just think there are better teams than the Yankees, so I don't understand why people are like they're stacked. I just don't agree with that, but everyone can have their own opinion. Yeah, so we are going to talk about the main subject of this week. We had, I think, the biggest con free agent contract in, I don't know if it's in sports, I would say in sport U.S. sports history, and that is Bryce Harper signing with the Philadelphia Phillies for 13 years, and I think it was... Um, 335 million. I know I should have put it on my notes, but that was a big deal. Um, now, do I think Bryce Harper is worth that much money for that amount of time? Um, I'm, a lot of people are about to get triggered, but I, I prefer Bryce Harper over Mike Trout. Uh, that may just be because I watch the NL more than I watch the AL, the bias there that I've seen Bryce Harper more times than I've seen Mike Trout. I, I think Bryce Harper is a better ball player, but I don't know how I feel about that contract. And again, like these players have been signing huge contracts, Bryce Harper, Manny Machado, Giancarlo Stanton. I don't know really if, I don't know if he is worth it um, for that much money. But again, I think Bryce Harper is obviously one of the best players in the sport. It, if he, I do think he is the best player in the sport. But I don't know. I, I mean, that's just a lot of money. It's hard for me to picture that amount of money. And obviously, he's going to be there for 13 years. Um, that is just a long time. I... Yeah, it amazes me. So I don't know if there's if he can opt out and any of that because we talked about last week how Manny Machado can opt out in 2023 and not have to spend all the 10 years in San Diego. So who who knows? I if you do know if Bryce Harper can opt out, tell me down below in the comments on what year he can opt out. So I am glad that he did stay in the NL East. I we talked about a lot of my thoughts on this last week. I'm glad that he stayed in the NL East because, um, I mean, him being on the Phillies is really no different to me than him being on the Nats. It doesn't really, I don't really care um, because, obviously, the NL West is my main focus, but, and obviously, we are going to be playing the Phillies. I, I don't really mind him being on the Phillies. It doesn't change anything for me. Now, I do think it is kind of weird to sign with another team in the same league in the same division. I don't know. I mean, Manny Machado did the same thing. <laughs> I just don't know how I feel about that. Um, because usually, like, it, it was a free agent deal, though, because usually in a trade, they're not, I don't think they would trade somebody 
in the same division because I mean why would you do that <laughs> so you're like when your rival one of your best players but um yes so Bryce Harper did sign with the Philadelphia Phillies I suspected that I thought he would so I it wasn't really a big shock factor like Manny Machado was going to the irrelevant San Diego Padres <laughs> sorry Padres fans if there are any fans out there highly doubt it no <laughs> I'm so mean to the Padres I'm sorry but that is going to be all for this week I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast remember to give a like comment and subscribe and I will see you guys next week with more spring training talk maybe more signings who knows what will happen in baseball this week a lot more happened this week than I thought would so I will see you guys then bye